Hi, welcome to 3D Palace's swearing tutorial. Um, today I'm going to be swearing about this stupid goddamn piece of geometry and why I chose to uh, accept the challenge of taking a model that was plainly never designed to be put into a game engine and spend ages repairing it just so that I can get the repairs wrong. Uh, later on, unlike in the tutorial I just deleted, I will not be telling you how to commit suicide as a UV texture artist. I will be instead telling you what a fun job UVing is. Uh, anything else? Let me think. Yeah, um, seriously, okay, just if the guy who modelled this hadn't been me, I'd be around there punching him in the balls right now. So make sure when you have a modeler, okay, if it's being designed as a game model, that you tell him to make sure that the topology is okay. Otherwise you'll be swearing and eating your own tongue, which is uh, more or less what I've been doing. You, you'll be surprised at just how many times I've re-recorded this tutorial because it became so filled with swear words and hatred and anger. And there was a good... And what's that? This one isn't much better, no. Uh, incidentally, this time I'm joined by uh, top TV celebrity chef Heston Blumenthal. And uh, he says hi. He won't be talking on the microphone because that's expensive. Right, let's see. I'll just uh, unclick there. Right, so this is the front, okay? Nice and easy. And um, what I'm going to do is open my UV editor. And probably should have cleaned up all these verts first. But it didn't. And I'm just going to click this button here, which just unwraps the front all at once like. And you see there's a spare bit at the top there that 3ds Max has given me. That's nice. Now you see it's a little bit wonky, so let's just straighten it up a bit. There we go. And move that to there. And, uh, yeah, that's lovely, that is. It's lovely. Okay, now I'm going to take these bits that are all just annoying the tits off me. I'll just press that button and make them go away. And now I'm going to pretend that we're finished. Look, we're all finished. Yay! We're not really finished. Far from it. But we can pretend. So, how many times have you cried today whilst uh, trying to unwrap things? Have you tried swallowing your own tongue yet? Unwrapping. It makes you want to kill things. You notice I was quite calm in the last tutorial. Not this time. Right. Now I'm going to move these parts up. Shift and grab. Because there's a hidden polygon there, you see. That's like a challenge for you. If you didn't see it was there, you would when your texture was all kind of streaky and weird. And you're going, oh, Chris, why have you taught me to make this model so badly? Your tutorials are the terrible ones. That's why I never buy them. I just, I just pirate them so that you and your children have to eat 15p noodles from Tesco's. Yeah, that's why. Hope you feel bad about yourself. All right, let's uh, bring that one in a bit. So, how are you? Are you enjoying the tutorial? Oh, I hope so. We try and make quality tutorials over here at 3D Palace. Look, there's a weird edge thing. I wonder what it does. I bet it does something. Let's just select it and see where it is. Where are you from, Polygon? Are you an underside piece? Oh, you are. What joy. Right then, so if I select everything, and then these ones, and then pull it down, there, you see? Now, yes, there's a couple of missing bits here, but there's no reason for me to start, you know, trying to strangle myself while crying. Let's have a quick look and see if we can just scale these and get them all fixed up a bit. As you see, we have a few crossed over parts here. Not many, though, so that's okay. <laughs> ah, sod it, I'm just going to have it this way. I'm in a rush. I can't be bothered to do things the good way anymore. Now then, where's this polygon here from? Oh, it's a side one. I didn't even ask for a side one, did I? I didn't select them or anything. Why is there a side polygon in here? Go on, you bugger off. I'm going to detach it and throw it away. Tools. Detach edge verts. Now press the bugger off button. Go away. Go on. I don't want you there. Uh, is there another one over here? Or is that it? No, I think that's it. Right, let's have a look at this polygon. Straighten out a bit. Come on, move. There we go. Nice and straight. 
Good, good, good. Remember, lovely straight vertexes is what you want. You know who doesn't have straight vertexes in their model? Justin Bieber, that's right. You don't want to be like Justin Bieber, do you? No. You know why, don't you? Because Justin Bieber punches goats. There we go. Lovely, lovely, and lovely. So we're nearly done here. We're just going to sort out our inner windows. And you're probably sitting thinking, why did I go all the effort of torrent downloading this torrent? Well, if you did, it's because you're a wicked person. And you've made angels cry. Now I'm going to push this down. There we go. And that's the front part done. Would you believe it? Oh, it was so easy to do, wasn't it, as well? Yay. Okay, now I'm going to do the side parts. So if I just select uh, these bits here and do the other side at the same time because I'm going to think I'm being clever and then I'm going to do something wrong and then I'm going to cry. There we go. And click the grow button. Haven't selected anything wrong yet. But there's still time, don't worry. Just going to go through and select all these parts here. And I've probably selected a wall piece by mistake at least once. Which is good because it means that our UV map will be wonky as hell. Let's just move this over here. Because my view is if my UV map isn't wonky as hell, it's not a 3D palace one. You know what, dear 3D Palace chums? I'm sorry. I feel we got off on the wrong foot somehow. I think that doing UV maps has perhaps enraged my brain too much. <laughs> Let's be friends. Let's just do UVs endlessly. I'm crying. Alright, let's turn this one around. You know what, I should just get drunk and do this in the style of Pedro del Toro. Most of you don't remember him, but he was a great tutorial author from 3D Palace about nine years ago. <laughs> Admittedly, all he could ever model was uh, probably stuff that isn't really suitable for offices, but... He still has a fond following, I believe, in various universities. I know Stafford University uh, posting about him the other day. His tutorials were, as I recall, uh, the teapot car, which is a car made from teapots. Well, a teapot with some spheres for wheels or cylinders or something. The second tutorial was a neck massager. Take that as you will. That used to bend and flop about. The third one was bouncy balls. The fourth one was bendy finger. So I'm sure you can see which way this is going. All spoken with his outrageous Borogravian accent. Oh, the hilarity. Right, let's just uh, press this button and see what happens. Well, that didn't work particularly well. Let's change the alignment. Oh, it worked a treat. Apart from up here, this mysterious polygon here. What's this mystery polygon? Let's press the zoom button and see where it's from. Is it a back-facing polygon that shouldn't be there, perhaps? Yes, it is. So you know where it can go, don't you? Somewhere else. Okay, so this part here should be fairly easy. Just going to have to go around it quickly and make sure that it's not got any wrong parts. It doesn't look like it has yet, though, so it's always a joy. I'm going to shift these in a bit. Just to make the uh, unwrapping a little bit easier, like that. Okay, now if I select all these, I should be able to grow my UVs. I'm going to deselect that one and then move it all straight up. Just to make sure there's nothing there that's hidden and there isn't. Go straight into here and do the same again. That'll basically allow these parts to be done. Okay, now I'm going to take this and just move it up here. Like that. And then take this part and just move it next to it. Go 
big old castle. Ho ho ho. Uh, dear, I should do a tutorial, you know, go, some, go and buy some crack and do 3D pilots tutorials on crack. Hey, hey everyone, uh, we're going to model a teapot. Ah, uh, teapots, ah, uh, like that. Two hours. You'd love that, wouldn't you? You're like, yeah, we'll watch that. Wouldn't like a tutorial where I'm like doing something serious with it. 3D palettes live on crack. Yeah. Right. Going to do this walkway next. And uh, should be able to just map that straight down. There we go. And then just resize our item. Don't want it too big. Because we've still got quite a lot of stuff to do and we can resize parts later. It's not really an issue. Right, we don't have any backside to this, which is going to make it nice and easy, but we do have these walls, and I'd like to do them now, that way they'll be out the way. So I'm just selecting the first seven on this, so I can use the grow modifier a couple of times. Plop, plop. Okay, and then I'll deselect these. And these. You get used to working in perspective mode, but if you prefer orthographic mode, then you can use that, you arty farty person. <sighs> Bloomin' orthographic mode. When I were a kid, there were no orthographic mode. It were perspective or note. My dad used to come in the room and he'd say, Son, I hope you're working in perspective mode. I go, I am there, father. <coughs> then he used to beat me with a belt. Because that's how they work up in the northeast of England, you see. That's inc that means you're doing well. Oh, I'm going to beat you with a belt. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> <sighs> Happy times. That's how Electronic Arts does it. Well, beating you with a belt, locking you downstairs in the cellar, abusing you a bit. That's the promotion fast track. You know, it's funny how many, how few people actually listen to the tutorial when you get to this far on in it. Especially when it's something like unwrapping a gatehouse. Which I know is quite a difficult kind of thing to be doing in the first place. There we go, let's press this button and see what happens. No work, please. Ah, like that. See, it's worked. Crying at your computer makes it work better. Right, now we'll take this smaller wall here. And move it down here. How are you doing over there? Mm. Excellent. Sorry about that, just got someone here in the luxurious 3D Palace offices helping themselves to the caviar and the foie gras. And by caviar and foie gras I of course mean 15p Tesco value noodles. I'm just going to shrink this down a bit because this wall's smaller than that wall anyway. Okay. Obviously, I've got two sets of UVs sitting on top of each other, and I don't even care. All right, now I'll just go up and grab this, and then this. There we go. Oh, is that Tesco healthy eating cookies I spy there? Flipping marvellous. Why, thank you. Nom nom. Now to listen to me crunching up biscuits. Mmm. So guilty. Right then. So with this part done, I can now do the front. Mmm, biscuit. So what I'm going to do is select the inside of these windows. It makes it easier, so you get like parts that are easiest to get to out of the way, and then make the embiggen button. And I can select all those parts there just by basically clicking the. Uh, button here and then deselecting all the parts I've selected by accident, which is actually quicker. There we go. See, so just deselect these side parts. And then all I need to do is really just select these three polygons repeatedly until I start going mad and uh, try and bite off my own tongue while crying. That's our door back. 
Hello there, the voice of reason has just told me that I've been ranting quite a lot in this tutorial. You have to understand, unfortunately, that UVs are uh, just completely deselected and a massive pain in the arse, especially when you've basically recorded the same segment over and over again and something has gone tragically wrong. The tragically wrong in this case being a tiny piece of geometry that, you know, didn't have its topo set correctly. So, anyway, uh, seriousness aside, it is good to vent now and again. Not so much that, you know, you actually literally frighten your user base, I suppose. So you think that you're going to come and cut them with a pin. However, trust me when I say you do need to unwind sometimes. Right then, I'm going to grab these pieces and just bring them down a bit. This will be really easy for us, thankfully. And then I can get the middle parts of these windows here. I just scale them all simultaneously just using the freehand tool, which is quite nice. And then I can just bring them across using this. Uh, the tutorial I deleted before this contains so many expletives it just couldn't have been used by anyone ever, if it's any consolation. And I do really love you and want to give you hugs. Big wink. There we go. There, how do you do you think I'm doing better now being nice at my dear users? I do too. I have been eating biscuits. They were delicious. I have no guilt. Okay, so these two parts here should unwrap fairly easily, hopefully. This kind of weird frontage of a witch's house. I'm going to um actually click plus one more time. And again, I just want to get kind of the outsides as well. And I'll deselect these bits. Okay, because hopefully I can stick the windows in there. So let's just, uh, there we go. So you see they're obviously too tall at the minute, but scaling will sort this out in just a moment. Okay, so bring them down so they're to more reasonable height and there's quite a lot of work that needs to be done really to make these okay so I'm just gonna start off with the inside here and I don't think a uniform scale will work too well no it won't but it'll work well enough I suppose Okay, and then I'm going to go all the way up to here, bring it in. Okay, and that basically leaves me like this. Now I'm going to try and get this one as similar as I can. It depends whether you want two that are basically fundamentally identical or not. I think I was going to just overlap them, but I'm not so sure really I want to. I think what might be nicer is if I just put them fairly close to each other, like that, and then fit them in somewhere when I'm done. Now you can see our roof is, well it's getting there, um, it actually looks like this is our roof here, I suspect. That's the tunnel from the bottom, you can see. So this part here looks like our roof. Yeah, I think it is. Let's see if I can just select it and make things a bit easier. There are various parts that seem to be missing from the roof, but... If we can get the majority of it, and just make sure that other parts aren't deselected. Um, we should be okay. There we go. Right, so you can see which parts are missing. So I'll go straight into... Oop, not like that. Just go straight into finding them. This is going to be a chance to make sure the parts that we don't need are deselected. At the minute it looks like just the roof, so that's cool. And it's gone all the way around the edge. I just want to make sure that nothing else is selected that has been. That seems fine. Okay, now, go over here. I'm going to do a select. And I'm probably going to have to do a rotate as well. Hang on, let me just... Uh, Align this better. There we are. 
Now it's aligned, that'll make my job like so much easier. There we go. Now, with the roof, I can put this here. Like that. And, uh... Yeah, that seems okay, actually. There's some parts here that I might need to change, but, uh... Aside from that, it's not too bad, so... Let's just see if I can go through here and select the outside parts. If not, then it's going to be easier, possibly, doing it differently. Let's have a look. Select this lot. Shrink my selection. There, that's it. That's what I wanted. Grow, grow, grow. These front parts should be on here as well. Okay, now shrink it. Yeah, it shrinks too much, that thing. It shouldn't have shrunk that far. Never mind. Ah. <sighs> I remember in one of the tutorial segments I deleted, I was going on about the select tools and how if you've got 90 degree facing angles, you're going to have a real job basically using automatic select, so to avoid it. Although it might work in this aspect. Um, I'm not going to risk it simply because I have most of this selected now anyway. But, you know, you're fully welcome to try it. Incidentally, I can see some bad geometry there. I'm going to pretend I can't though. So if you could do the same and just pretend that the geometry on this model is perfect, Preferably whilst like smiling and winking, that would be great. If you hear any bitter crying, by the way, that's probably me. I'm not overly worried about the back of my model, by the way, if you're wondering. Um, I'm still not sure whether or not I'm going to leave this piece of kind of concrete framing or stone framing or whatever it is in. I'll decide soon enough, I'm sure. Right, so I'm just going around making sure that this is fairly even because I want to obviously scale it. And I'm going to scale it this way first. See, so we get that edge in. I'm going to scale it this way. Like that. Okay, that's fine. Right, now I'm going to take my two windows that I've created. And make them a bit smaller. Pop them here. And my crenellations, which are basically what all these bits down here are kind of doing. I'm going to take those in a second. So I've got the back sides of my crenellations that I've got to do as well, much to my extreme annoyance. So first of all I'm going to go over the tops. So just basically going up here. It's a bit like a track, you know. Just going over the top. Um, I'm going to go one way first and then I'm going to turn the model around and make sure I've got everything selected the second way, just in case you're wondering. That was one of the pieces of topology, by the way, that was missing that made me incredibly unhappy. Those corners there. Just there. Yeah, that was gone. That wasn't there, that edge. And uh, building it did terrible things to the UVs. Terrible, terrible things. Things that you wouldn't do to a transvestite hooker at 3 o'clock in the morning. Right, let's see. Just uh, press that and that, and let's see what shape this is. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. Especially once bought in like this, so it's the correct scale and size. So let's see what repairs we have to do here now. There's always repairs. And 
that. It would appear that I've mislaid a polygon somewhere. However, rather than worrying about it, I think I'm just going to pretend that I meant it that way. There we go. So that gives us this shape here. With the missing polygon that isn't missing at all. <laughs> Don't fix it yourself when you've got time. I've recorded this three times, now I'm tired. Okay, going to stick that there. In our crenellation area. Now this one. This one should, in theory, be a little bit easier, actually. Although I use the term in theory, because it probably won't be. <laughs> Incidentally, um, yeah, for those people who are worried that I might have uh, killed quite a lot of transvestite hookers, no, 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 not at all. No, uh, most of them are fine. There we go. I want to get some very confusing phone calls from the police soon, I can imagine. Okay, so these two pieces here, and I'm just going to projection map them. So they're flat, just over here. And I'm going to take them to a quiet area, just off to the side. I don't know why that made me smile and think that was quite funny, but it was. Okay, now I'm going to select this one and just flip it. I uh, always forget where the flip tool is. Okay, and with these on top of each other now, I can just do some minor moving. Oh, how wonderful. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yep. Yeah. Still separating these parts out. Hold down shift. You can see the edges as they come out. I mean, it depends really how incredibly anal you want to be about this, but... It's best so you don't get the texture stretching, because someone's going to notice. And when they do, they're going to be like, Ah, look at you. Ha ah, Lazy unwrapper. Ah, your model's crap. And then you'll go into a rage and kill more transvestite hookers. So, there we go. It's a weird theme going on here, and I can't quite put my finger on it. Okay, so this part here now is ready to go off down to the uh, side here. You can see where it fits, so I'm just going to freeform mode. There we go. Fits quite nicely, doesn't it? There's actually not a lot of pieces left as well, which is good. Although, a lot of the pieces are things like the insides here. So we can select these and actually it'll be a very, very simple job to do the insides of the crenellations. Remember what I said, you're going to want these for, obviously if you have the player, being able to walk along these parts here. I mean, that's up to you in your whole kind of design thing. I might, I'll see, you know. I could make it DLC, couldn't I? Ten dollars, you're allowed to walk up the inside of the gate house. Yeah, put on Kickstarter, raise seventeen dollars. I was actually thinking of um, doing a Kickstarter to raise money for a 3D Palace training van. However, from the way I've been talking recently, I suspect a lot of people would think it was some sort of a weird murder type thing. So it's probably best that I don't for the moment. Okay, just put this over here. Like that. And we've got this piece over here at the front. See how that curves out there? That's weird, that. I didn't actually select it that way, so... Anyway, let's, uh... But let's, I mean, I'm going to... Just, uh, select... Here, I think. Click the grow button, and we'll select some extra ones for us. You know, that's the thing, you see, I do these for people who I hope are going to be like following along at home and trying their hand at like learning new skills. 
I get this horrible suspicion that at least one person's just sitting there, completely naked, covered in like custard powder or something. And yeah, more UVs. Uh, which is perfectly, perfectly understandable because you know this is the internet we're talking about here, but still slightly worrying. Okay, put that up there, and I can just fit it into this part. Not a lot of bits left, if you'll notice, and the bits that are left are, well, they're confused, lost little pieces that probably should have uh, taken more care over. Okay, now this part here is the inside of our tunnel, just there, depending on whether we need our tunnel or not. Uh, so for that, I think uh, cylindrical, ideally going in the correct direction, would be beautiful. There we go. And what I can do is take this piece here, what is not connected to nothing, and I can either weld it or just leave it next to it. Depends how lazy I'm feeling. I'll give you a clue, I'm pretty, feeling pretty bloody lazy. Okay, go into here, and... Basically I'm just going to make it small enough to fit here. And then I've got all these weird bits here, you see, look, oh, right, it's the front of this part. I didn't realise. Dear me. wonder what it was. Well, now I know. So it looks like I'm going to have to uh, select these. Go all the way along. And then down here. Yeah, all these parts here that are uh, basically leftover polygons are part of this tragic little thing. And this is where I built some completely new geometry, got into a rage, and stopped recording last time. See, the first time I recorded it was that corner piece. Second time I recorded it was another corner piece, believe it or not. Third time I recorded it was that bit on the top there. Ooh. It made me so angry. Things were going to get heard. Okay, now, just quickly go around, make sure I haven't got any bits selected that I don't want again. I know it sounds stupid as hell, but really, you don't want to. Okay, go into there and click that. Bring this up here. Okay, now I'll shrink these down. And what we have to do is get this a rational level. So. Make sure there's no hidden bits where there shouldn't be. I'm just going to go in here and do these. By doing this, you see, we can see where the inner parts are. And these parts here appear to have... Uh, yeah, they've been separated off. That's okay. What I can do is move all these slightly up so they're not overlapping like that, because that part there is actually covered on a different piece. Now under here, let's check these are all visible, and they are, that's brilliant. Okay, so I'm a big old happy camper. I'll take these down to here. See, transvestite hooker will survive tonight. And bring this down to there. Let's make sure our edges aren't touching. There we go. Now I've still got a few bits left over. Where are these from? I imagine they're from just about everywhere. Yep, look, they're at the back here. It's generally messy parts that need to be welded into here and weren't. And I've got a way to weld these. What's that? Yeah, not welding them. Ho ho ho. So I'm just going to stick them over here and uh, pretend they don't exist. Ha 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 best responsiblest artist ever. There's their little friends. <sighs> ah, just stick them in the roof cavity and no one will notice for the moment. You, however, can go and tidy them up because I know where they're from and I know what you're like and if you don't go and tidy them up you'll be sad. Right then, so with that done, apart from this bit, where was this bit from again? Oh yeah, up there. It's going on the roof anyway. <laughs> There we go. So apart from that, um, actually no, I'm not sod it because I can see where it goes and I want to fix this. 
Uh, y. Tools. Target weld. There we go. Should be lucky. One of the tutorials, like the first part I deleted, I think, was like 40 minutes of target welding. Then I thought, well, I'm supposed to be showing you how to do it quickly. Even I was bored. There we go. See, that wasn't too bad, was it? I wonder where these bits are from. Oh, they're over there. Well, tough. They're not now. Right then. So, all I need to do now is go to my tools. And I'm going to render myself a UV template. Bam. Like that. Okay. And, uh, pretend they're not there. Tee hee. Right, now I'm going to, uh, save my image and I'm in my gatehouse already so gatehouse UV template JPEG done hooray hooray right and in the next part I'll stick a text on it so till then TDFN